Okay, good evening and welcome to our online interactive Bible study. So, um, due to load shedding, today's study has been pre-recorded, but please feel free to share your thoughts and your comments on the, sec on the comment section below. We will try our best to um, respond to them by Friday and perhaps have another interview such as this uh, in a discussion format to respond to all your questions. But for now, please feel free to interact. Uh, we also like to welcome to our panel this evening, uh, Pastor Furstenberg, he's quite new. And then we have Pastor Guala, who has joined us before, Pastor Swartz and Pastor Chuchu. Please feel welcome and um, may our time together be blessed. Before we go and dive into the Word of God, I'm going to ask Pastor Furstenberg, if you can just um, do an opening prayer for us, please. Thank you, Pastor Carolus. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, it is always a wonderful privilege to open your word, to study from your word. And as we are going to delve into this week's study, I pray that your spirit will be with us, will guide us our thoughts so that when we are finished with this study, we know that you have talked to each and every individual, not us just here presenting, but also everybody that will be listening and watching. Please guide our thoughts. And uh, we also pray that you will be with our internet connections. As we know, we struggle with this. Um, and Father, we pray that your hand of mercy also will be upon that. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 Thanks, Pastor Furstenberg. Now, um, Having glanced through this quarter's lesson, uh, which is entitled In the Crucibles with Christ, it would seem that this quarter's lessons are very practical in nature, and uh, which is good. And so this week we are dealing with the different crucibles of life. I want to begin with what a crucible is before we hand over to, to Sunday's portion of the lesson. A crucible is a vessel meant to melt or, re, or refine material in high degree of heat. And that you can find in the lesson quarterly as well. A crucible is a vessel meant to melt or refine material in high degree of heat. Now, I don't know how many of you, panelists or viewers, have gone through crucibles in, the, in your Christian journey. How many of you are currently, as we are speaking, going through a crucible? And my hand is certainly raised. I had crucibles in my life and experiences, hot, degreed experiences, and uh, perhaps going through one as we speak. And looking back in my life, I thank God for the crucible team because uh, it certainly molded me, my character, reshaped my character, and also my ministry, my preaching ministry, my pastoral ministry. Now, I want to be clear before we go into Sunday's portion of the lesson, uh, that and, and I want to say this from the very onset, the bad things we go through in life is not from God. Okay, it's not from God. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 17, every good and perfect gift comes from God. The Bible, um, uh, But the Bible says that the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So we, we should have it clear in our mind that these crucible, crucibles, these things that we go through in life that is sometimes hard and difficult, which we call trials and tribulations are not necessarily from God, but God has a way, and I know we quoted this several times last in the last quarter, but God has a way of working all things, even the bad things that happen to us, uh, together for the good to them that love him, found in Romans 8 verse, verse 28. He's got a way of using these fires that we go through to reveal his glory, his greatness and faithfulness. You remember when, when, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fire, um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar looked in and he, and he saw fourth person, and he said, surely your God is God of, of all gods. And, and so surely our fires that we go through in life really reveals God's greatness and his faithfulness. I want to touch on um, our memory text, and that's found in First, First Peter 4, verse 12, verse 13, that basically paints the same picture. It says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, right? Being in the crucible with Christ, that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed. See, the purpose of, 
of the sufferings and, 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 and situations we sometimes find ourselves in is to reveal the glory of God. So you may also be glad with exceedingly, with exceeding joy. Now, because of uh, prior commitments, we are going to start with Sunday, but from Sunday, we're going to go over to Thursday and then come back to, to Monday, this portion of the lesson, if that's fine. Uh, Pastor Furstenberg, can you lead us into, I think it's you, right? Sunday's a portion of the lesson. Yes, thank you, Pastor Carolus. And um, I just want to greet everybody that is watching as well. Surprises. Who doesn't like a surprise? If, if we think about a surprise, we think about it something good, you know, like it's a surprise party or, or something, somebody is giving you a gift. Um, but, but we don't want to think of a surprise as something that is bad. Uh, but there is bad surprises. Let me quickly tell you a story, and I'm going to look at my time. Um, one of my brothers, many, many years ago, told me that he was washing both his cars. It was a nice, sunny afternoon. He valeted the cars from top to bottom, and as he was putting everything away, he went into the house to uh, put everything away, you know, and everything on its place, and while he was there, he poured himself a cool drink. He sat down for about two minutes and then he heard a noise that he did not want to hear on the corrugated iron roof. Yes, it was a hailstorm. Both these cars was outside. Now, the interesting thing, um, now we all know how our cars look when they go through a hailstorm like that. But it was a surprise because it was a sunny day. But the thing is like, he told me afterwards, when he told me the story he was relating, and he said, um, you know, there was no indication. It was by surprise. Nobody warned me. And, and I was smiling like as if there was going to come a warning of a hailstorm. And, and this is the something with, with, with crucibles in our lives. Sometimes they, they just come by surprise. They, there's no warning. Sometimes we can see trouble coming from far off and, and we can try to manage ourselves in a way that we can go through a rough patch in our lives. Now, if we look, and uh, Pastor Carolus has uh, indicated in our memory verse, in First Peter chapter 4, verse 12, and I am going to read it um, from the NASB, and it says, Beloved do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you. Be not be surprised. Why not? Which comes upon you for the testing as though some strange thing were happening to you. Now, some people think when we follow God, everything is going to be perfect. Um, I have even heard some people say, if you just follow the Ten Commandments, nothing bad will happen to you. Now, I, I can think of an old friend of mine and of my colleagues. We read of him in the scriptures in Job. And we know Job, he followed everything. But yet there was something happening to him. And um, I quickly want to page to Job. Um, as we get to Job, um, and um, I think there it's verse 15. Quickly it says, And the Sabians attacked and took them. They also slew the servants. And while he was still speaking, something else was happening. Another one also came. The fire of God fell from heaven. So, you know, it was a human thing, and then it seems like it was something from God, but it was nature that was happening. And then the next point, it says the Chaldeans were, were, were attacking them. And while they were still speaking, the other one came and said, now there was a big wind. Now, that is a surprise. You know, maybe we are all expecting one thing to happen at one time. We do not expect a lot of things to happen. And, and, and this is the things as Christians, we should be uh, aware that surprises and bad surprises will come our way. Um, and now I must just say, uh, you know, the worst thing for us as Christians, we expect somebody else that is not in the brotherhood to... Uh, 
talk against us or to say something bad about us. But sometimes we find that um, this comes also from the members amongst us. So what uh, Peter is saying here to us, we should not be surprised because as God, as our predecessors, as the patriarchs went through trials and tribulations, they were in crucibles. We should not be surprised if they come through. I always say, um, stop the bus, ask God, stop the bus, ask him what I should do right so that the crucible can pass as fast as possible. Um, uh, I know my time is running out. If we are quickly looking at um, some of the other verses, verses in First uh, Peter 4. Give me 30 seconds. Make sure that none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, or evildoer, or a troublesome meddler. So if those things come upon you, don't suffer because of those. Rather, verse 16, but if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be ashamed, but is to be glorified in this name. So if something comes over you and you are tested by surprise, um, shrug the surprise off, and handle it as a Christian. Then um, the crucibles will not be that bad for us. But if you're surprised and you're just standing there and I don't know what's going to happen with us. Um, at this stage, I, I want to hand over to Pastor Carolus. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much, Pastor. Um, are there any comments on, on, on Sunday's post? Uh, I think Sunday is basically a springboard for all the other surprises or crucibles that we are going to talk about. Um, if there are no comments on Sunday's portion, we're going to jump, we're going to skip and go over to Thursday's portion and we're going to deal with the crucibles of maturity and then we'll come back um, later to, to, to Monday's portion. Uh, Pastor Shalom, can you just deal with that aspect? This is Thursday's portion, crucibles of maturity. Yes, thank you. Thank you, my pastor. Well, just want to say welcome to all the viewers and uh, just greet all the panelists um, in this interesting lesson of the crucibles. Uh, what Pastor Fessenberg has say, well, just said that uh, about surprises, um, I like the, 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 the writer saying that the, the crucibles um, we need to say, we, we need to expect them. It's expected. It's not, it's not a distinct to Christians. Everyone goes to the crucibles, whether you're a Christian or not. It's not something that is peculiar, only reserved for Christians. It's there for everyone. Because remember, there are two, two forces that are, that are at war, um, the forces of good and the forces of evil. So it does not say that you are a Christian, then therefore you, you, you reserve a, a certain crucible. Whether you're not a Christian or not, these crucibles will come. But what is important is how then we deal with each and every crucible that we, we encounter uh, or we go through it. I like, I like here talking about the, the crucible of maturity, where, where the verse that has been read in the text, in the, in the, in the lesson, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, it says, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a message from Satan to baffle me, lest I be exalted above measure. Now here, you, you'll discover that Paul here is, is talking about his own state um, uh, 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 or his own crucible. But when I looked at the lesson that uh, saying that the crucible of maturity uh, I was trying to to get into terms of like how 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 does a crucible become a maturity? And then I understand in his journey of Christian work, in our journey of Christian work, the 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 the, the, the essence or the, the 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 essence of these crucibles are there to make us mature Christian, to move from this degree to that degree, to have a better understanding and a growth. Now, when I looked at this, um. Uh, at this at this lesson this is what i've found number one is that paul is 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 identifying where 
and who is bringing this crossover. It says that it comes from the messenger of Satan. So Paul, he knows where the crucible comes from. He, he does not go around, but he knows where it comes from. And he knows its intention. But though he knows it, where it comes from, because if, if we don't, if we don't, if we're not able to, 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 to pinpoint where our crucibles <clears throat> comes from, we'll not be able to respond mature from them. The reason why we, we, we respond immature is because we can't locate where they come from. So therefore he knows where it comes from and he, he, he knows that it, it, it comes from the devil. So it is very much important that we are able to, 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 to know that. Now, the reason why Paul knows that it comes from the devil is because Paul is working to disturb the kingdom of the of Satan. So when the kingdom of Satan is disturbed, the, the, the automatic thing that the devil will do is to put you in a crucible. He does not care if you don't disturb his, 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 his kingdom. You know, uh, actually he will use you <laughs> to disturb others. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, a famous saying that says that uh, the devil, when a praying Christian uh, wakes up the kingdom of 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 of, of devil is is, is 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 shaken but when someone who is not shaken the the, the devil says like, no sleep because you don't bother so so therefore when the devil is shaken he then uh makes sure that he uses his tool to 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 to, to disturb uh, uh, um, the, the, the Christian. But what is interesting is that because you are a mature Christian, you are able to use that very same tool of the devil to advance God's kingdom. Uh, uh, you are able to use that tool to advance God's kingdom. That's what, that's what, that's what Paul has been saying here. Now he, he also said that he allows God, he, he also identified that because of, it was, it, Satan did a uh, the discourse will come from Satan. He then knew that God allowed it. If God allows it, then what Paul, Paul's response he's, he is not to focus on the devil, but Paul's response is to go and knock to God. He said that three times I've prayed to God. He locates where it comes from, but where he knocks, he goes to God. Three times he knocks. So in, 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 therefore he depends solely on God for him to, 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 to manage the crucible. So the, the maturity in this crucible is not to go and attack the devil, but is to go to the one who allowed it, um, uh, uh, this crucible. Uh, because Paul knows that it is God. Now, what, 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 when, when Paul asked to God, he asked three things. He asked three times a specific prayer that Lord remove this thorn in my flesh, a specific prayer. So when you are under a crucible, be specific to God and allow God to answer you, not according to what you want, but according to your need. And remember the crucible is to make us mature Christians. So therefore when God allowed, when God allowed, when, when God answered to uh, Paul, my grace is sufficient. Then, therefore, it meant God says that this crucible works for your salvation. This crucible uh, will, 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 sustain, will, will, sustain, will sustain you into maturity. And then the last part is that um, God gave him the assurance of his presence. And these this things, I know I'm not in the lesson, but this is what I've learned from myself. So God gave the assurance, but let's go back to, to the lesson then, what, 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 what the author say, is saying. I like what he, what he was saying, uh, where, where, she, where, where, she's, where, where the author, I'm, I'm not saying that it's a she, but where, she, where he said that there's a big difference between cutting down and, and, and pruning. We cut plants that we don't want anymore. We prune plants 
that we want to develop into a greater fruitfulness. In other words, we, we need to have an understanding that God works in us to cut certain defects that are found in us so that we become better Christians. But we need to locate, number one, where our crucible comes from. Number two, where to run to. Number three, be specific in our prayers. And number four, allow God then, when he answers us, uh, allow his grace to be more sufficient to us. That is why Paul lastly said that, I then rejoice in my weaknesses. I rejoice in suffering. I rejoice in tribulation because he has embraced the answer that which God gave him. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Before you before you go in and uh, away, I mean, uh, and I think you might have touched on it, but I want to zero on this last portion of, or not at least where the writer of the quarterly, you know, brings out the point that Paul believed that his thorn was given to him. And perhaps two questions uh, comes from that. And the first one is who is who, who gave it to him? Who gave him this crucible or this thorn in his flesh? Um, anyone would like to respond? Pastor Gwala, I see your mic is unmuted. Yes, I actually want to just put more uh, issues on the table so that when we respond, we have all of them. I probably wish Mfundi Stewart you can define maturity in the context of the lesson that he is presenting. And the second thing that uh, would help the viewers is for probably to answer the question, are all crucibles helping us to be matured? And the third one is, is the tools of the devil and um maturity are they uh, oh tools of the devil and crucible sorry tools of the devil and crucible are they synonymous or are they two different things because i'm sure if someone is listening and then those questions might come to mind thank you chair <laughs> uh, all right uh, shalom pastor, pastor shalom are you in the hot seat today hey eh? You want to quickly respond, and, and maybe other viewers can also jump in here. Um, yeah. I think there are, there are four pertinent questions that have been asked. Yes, Pastor Shalom, which one will you target? I, I would say when it says that it, 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 he, it, it was given, uh, this is what I, uh, uh, um, I, I, I've, I've, I've come to understand that uh, as God, uh, as it, it has been allowed by God, in, in other words, God's hand was in it mm. as well as Satan's. You see, this is not yeah. this is not so with all our tribulations. This is not so with all our tribulations. In one aspect, they are messengers of Satan. In other aspect, they are messengers of God. All depends upon which message we listen to. Mm. So that's my answer. So, 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 in as much as the hand of God is there, but also the hand of the devil is there. So, it all depends on which message we listen to. Because not all tribulations, you know, and not all of them, uh, some of them are messengers of the devil and some of them are, are, are messengers of God. So, but, so, but, but even so, though that, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Shalom, uh, even that, you know, even if it, if, this is my humble view, you know, even if it does come from the devil yeah. and the devil, to, to me, even those things, I believe that, the, that, that, that God is able to work even the devil's crucibles, you know, that the devil directly, uh, and, and even things that we brought upon ourselves, even that we directly, you know, we didn't ask, we put ourselves in the fight that God has the ability. And we shouldn't go on that, that God is going to make it all right, because there are still consequences to sin, you know, and, and, and might be to our detriment. But I like First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, that says, for there is no temptation. I take temptation as trial and tribulation, whatever you want to add. But there's nothing uh, come our way that God is not, that, that, that that we are not able to to bear but with every temptation god has provided a way of escape and so um god allows these things right um but it is not always from him but he allows it because he understands that this will be good for us mm -hmm. you know and you uh, pastor first was talking about job and and a perfect example of god allowing but 
you are still ultimately in God's hands. You know, when you look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, "Our God will deliver us." And and but but ultimately, Nebuchadnezzar was in the hands of God because God is the one that the Bible says had given Nebuchadnezzar the authority mm -hmm. to to conquer Jerusalem so that they can come. So for me. Ultimately, God is in control and he will prohibit or, or he, will, he will allow or disallow uh, crucibles to come our way that the devil has planned for us because he knows what we are able to handle. Pastor Guala, are you satisfied? Uh, yeah, I just want to, to, to say something here. When you introduced the lesson, you brought a beautiful point that bad things do not come from God. That's the baseline. In other words, crucibles are not coming from God. However, that needs to be balanced. And the balance is that God allows the crucibles. They may not be coming from him, but he allows them. Now, why is he allowing them? He looks at the crucible. Will this crucible develop my child. And if the crucible is going to develop you or bring you closer to him, he makes sure that that crucible does not overwhelm you, but you are able to navigate through that crucible. That's why the verse you quoted, that there is no temptation that he allows, which is beyond our comprehension. All right? Therefore, he doesn't give it, the devil gives it, but he weighs it. Will my child be able to go through this? If he knows he gives you ability to, he allows it. If not, he will stop it because he does not want any of his children to be destroyed. Now, this, you would notice something in the Hebrew mind. When a bad thing happens, they immediately say it's from God. That's the Hebrew thinking. You read that in the book of Ruth. When Naomi was experiencing things, when she came back, she said, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. And the reason for that is that God has made me bitter. Was it God who made him her bitter? No, circumstances made her bitter. But in the Hebrew thinking, if God allows something, he takes responsibility. I think that's where you were saying, Pastor Carolas, that in as much as we go through crucibles, God is still in control. That's what the Hebrew mind is actually advocating for. Thank you. Yeah, just to add more, it's, we all say we are all saying uh, quite the same thing, but in different ways. Is that uh, when 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 we say when when Paul responds. Remember, I said he identified where the crucible comes from. But when he went, he knocked to God. He prayed to God to remove the crucible, right? And God gave him the assurance of saying that my grace is sufficient. Are we together? So therefore, as we, as, we, as we can understand that every crucible that comes, was one, one would say, from, from your question, one would say, if God knows that I have an ability to, 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 to care, right? I don't know it. You see, mm -hmm. some people say that, why do I suffer? Why do, you know, others, they can't understand, they can't cope, you see. Others commit, uh, 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 someone who co commit, uh, uh, um, what do you call this, uh, suicide, you know? Others do that. Then, then the question is, does, you know? So what I'm trying to, where I'm going at with this one is that, we all agree saying that crucibles are not uniquely for Christians. Was two forces at war, the good and the bad. All of us go through those. But how we respond, how we 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 we, we allow God to to, to 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 take his part and his role as Christians, it makes us able to bear those crucibles because we know when we run to God. We know that he did not uh, uh, inflict us crucibles because he's a good God. He's there to give us strength to be able to bear those crucibles. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. I think let, let's go. I think we might have touched on 
on Monday's uh, portion of the lesson that could actually answer some of our questions. Uh, Pastor Furstenberg, can, can you lead us into, thank you, Pastor Shalom, can you in, it, lead us into Monday's one? It speaks about crucibles of Satan, crucibles of Satan. Yes, um, when, when we get to this one, and earlier when I was doing this uh, lesson study, and, and sometimes um, I think before I go into this, we also need to, to realize that sometimes, and, and I think one of my colleagues is going to speak on that one, that's one of the other days, you bring something upon yourself. And, and, and it's, it's, you know, um, Satan, Satan may bring a temptation, but, but we choose to fall for temptation. And then we go into that sin. And then all of a sudden, when we sin, we always want to give Satan the blame. Um, and, and, and it's as if we are going back to the story of Adam and Eve. We want to pass the buck. But on Mondays, where I'm concentrating on, in uh, 1 Peter 5, verse 8, um, it says the following there. Uh, be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. And once again, that's the NASB. Now, um, I've, I've checked. Why does a lion roar? A lion does not roar because he's hungry or because he is angry a lion roars firstly to communicate secondly he roars to show others where his territory is so satan is walking around on this earth like a roaring lion showing to all of us whose uh, place is this look we, we we know if we go back um Adam handed over authority to Satan because uh, Satan is the prince of this earth, right? So, but it says there to us, there will be crucibles coming from Satan because he walks around and he looks who he can devour. So he will be bringing things upon you um, that you must try to get over with. And, and, and this is basically... If I can put it this way, this is where we always expect a crucible will be coming from. Like uh, my colleagues have said previously, it will come from Satan. So we know where to look. Um, but is it enough just to know where to look? Because um, if we just look and we do not act, there's a problem. Because just by looking is not going to prevent the crucible. Um, so we must be prepared for Satan. B by being prepared is, if, if I can put it in a nutshell, walk the Christian life with God. And then you will be prepared for Satan that is coming um, your way with crucibles. Now, if I look at... Um, uh, the, the second question that's in our, our, our study guide, it says, how should Christians react to Satan's prowling? Now, I've, I've jotted down a few things there, but it comes from the scripture part there. It says, we must be of sober spirit. So you must always be thinking. Your mind must always be open to see things coming your way. Um and the only way that we can do that is by spending time with God, being of a sober mind, always thinking on, can I say, the things of kingdom of God. Then we will see the other things happening all around us. The next point that um, is bringing out there in that text um, between verses uh, 8 to 11, it says, we must resist him. Now, you know. Um, I, I, I've heard some uh, preachers and um, one, one of my favorite preachers, uh, 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 Pastor, um, what's now I forget his name. That's not good to say. It's my favorite preacher. Uh, Morris Venden. Morris Venden. Uh, he, he used to tell a story of teenagers uh, in the backseat of a car. 
They've got no strength. But as soon as they see some headlights coming over the car, then they've got all the strength in the world. Now, we must be able to resist Satan wherever we are. If he comes to us with any temptation, we must be able to say to him, it is written, so that we can go back to the word of God and um, fight Satan with what God has given us. Um, and then and then he goes on, you know, and, and then some crucibles. When Satan brings them over you, you will not just see them pass on the pavement in front of you. They will knock on your door and they will come in. Um, and if I if I read there, it says uh, some of us will uh, suffer for a little while. Um, but we must resist them. Verse 10, after you have suffered for a little while. So uh, God may take us out of this crucible. But sometimes God, like we said previously, God allows things like this to happen because to build our relationship. And on the, the part that Pastor Chuchu just did for us, um, he said there in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, he said there, so that I may not exalt myself. So God already knew that he might exalt himself if this crucible was taken away. So sometimes God allows these things to build our faith because he knows us better than we know ourselves. And, and this is the problem that we sometimes sit with. We, we think we know ourselves, but God knows us better than we know ourselves. And we need to um, follow from there. Now, the other thing is... Um, God does not always just say to us, uh, just be on the lookout for Satan. Now, if we go to verse 10, um, and then the last part, uh, let me read the whole verse. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect you so he will he, he will prune you like we've said there he will make you a better person he will confirm you that you are his child he will strengthen and he will establish you so even if a crucible is coming from satan which is a bad thing god always turns it around and if we are willing to work with god in this turning around so that we can become better persons through this crucible how great would that be but this is one of the things um uh, I, I don't know how to say it more you have said it in the beginning pastor carolas that um these things come from satan and we must expect it but god will lead us through if we cling to him um if anybody else wants to uh bring something else in on uh, monday's uh part of the lesson Yeah, I, you know what, um, with regards to that verse, I mean, I like the fact that the Bible says, you know, um, the devil is like a roaring lion. So to me, the roaring part is like, you know, because a roaring can't hurt you, you know, it can scare you, but it can't hurt you. So he is a roaring lion. And then it says seeking whom he may devour. So it's not, he will devour, he, he can devour, but, but it's, 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 and, and sometimes we, you know, and I think crucibles are like a roaring man. It's like just the devil trying to get us in a predicament where we think we've lost. But just because he's roaring and just because we're in the crucible don't mean all is lost, all is gone. No, no, no. Um, uh, you know, uh, we take courage to know that Christ defeated the devil. And um, so he's roaring with no teeth in his mouth. He's just trying to scare us. And I praise God that we are already more than conquerors through him that love us. But I think, uh, uh, Pastor Carlos, I think if 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 we have been to uh, the nature reserve where, where, where there's lions and where there's wild animals, you know, it's 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 not the same as you hear them on TV, you know. Um, if you are there, it sounds like they are just outside. And you know that there's only a, a, a very thin fence 
between you and him and 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 sometimes they 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 sound like they are just next to you but they are far off and and this is also the thing that we must realize when we are out in nature and a lion roars most of us will uh, be a little bit afraid or actually a lot afraid um and and that's not the problem and then we concentrate so much on the roaring that we forget to secure ourselves and this is what's happening with us as christians as well when satan is roaring whom he can devour devour we are so worried about the roaring that we are not worried that we are not looking into the fact that we are secure Amen. Just stay where you are. You are secure because God is already there. And, and then we will not give him a chance. But we, what do we want to do? You know, it's like in the movies. When we hear something outside, we want to go look. We open all the doors and we go out and then he catches us. Now, this is what we should not be doing. Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor Guala, uh, you've got the difficult one. Crucibles of sin. I wonder why did you choose the difficult one? <laughs> Let me take this time and greet the viewers at home. And we really appreciate being on this platform to share with you what the lesson says. And what is most important to us is to glean from scripture. Uh, and that would help us. Therefore, our discussions here are rooted and based on scripture. And we are trying to even explain some of the texts that are shared in the scripture so that at home you would be in a position to understand what's happening. My, 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 my topic is a, a nice one. Uh, I choose to say that instead of saying a difficult one. The crucibles of sin. Now, the lesson is divided into two, strange enough for me. The first part is actually dealing with people who are Christians. And the second part is dealing with everybody. Now, this is based, <clears throat> based on uh, Romans 1.18. I think I want to read that verse so that you can see. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Then, this is the punchline, who hold the truth in, right, in unrighteousness? Therefore, yeah, you are talking about people who are professing to be Christians and who are now holding the truth in unrighteousness. That's what you're dealing with here. Now, there are a few things that you would pick up even the lesson is actually sharing them with us. The first one is that in life, when there is an action, there is always a consequence attached to that action. There's no action without a consequence. Therefore, that we need to learn and that we need to understand. As parents, when we do our parenting, if we are not doing certain things, there will be consequences for those things. If we do things, there'll be consequences for those things. Therefore, that's a lesson that we learn to our children. When they do certain things, they, those things have consequences and built in them. Therefore, it's important to know that every action has a consequence. The second thing that is important that I want us to also understand is that sin done in private attracts same consequences as sin done in public. And the problem that we normally have as Christians is that a sin that is done in private is not considered to be a sin. It is only a sin that is done in public which we declare sin. Even in our church, we don't discipline you for sin done in pub in private, but we will discipline you for sin done in public. And in church, we have preachers that go and preach while they are living in private sin, but we will never allow you to go and preach if you are living in a public sin. Therefore, there is a mentality that we need to change in our minds 
that a sin in private is not sin, but a sin in public is sin. Consequences of a sin are the same, whether it is in public or in private. The other important aspect that we need to pick up and learn is that God does not plan our demise. God is always looking out for us. You read Jeremiah, uh, it's very clear there, 29, 11. I have plans for you and my plans are to prosper, not to destroy you. Therefore, God cannot be part of a plan that has a destructive uh, approach to us, but our actions do because our actions attract consequences that can destroy us, consequences that can derail us, and consequences that can even move, away, move us away from God. Then you pick up something also very important here, that sin's consequences are too pronged. They affect our future and they affect our present. When it comes to our future, they temper with our eternity. They temper with the plan that God has for us to be in the kingdom one day. That's the consequences of sin. With the present, the consequences are we end up being in pain because of the actions and the sin that we have committed. For instance, the sin of adultery. What it does, one, it presents distrust or mistrust between family members. The second thing that it does, it destroys relationships. Because I will no longer relate with you the way I was before this. The third one, it has a tendency of affecting many people, not just you, the person who has committed it. It affects many people. And the other important aspect is people get suffering. They suffer because of one action that has been caused. Therefore, it has present reality while it also affects future reality. Therefore, let's just remember that important aspect. Then the lesson then turns from a person who now professes to be a Christian to, some, to everybody. It then brings a point which is very important. Uh, this is based on Romans 1, 21 to 32. The first thing that it brings is that sin is an indication of a darkened heart. Therefore, once I respond to sin, that indicates that my heart is no longer clean and clear. My heart has been darkened. And the second thing that is, is, is caused by sin is actually encouraging the person who acts on it to live a fake life, a life that actually says, I am a Christian, a life that says, I, I, I stand with those that are professing to, 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 to be God's children. Therefore, and yet, in reality, there is a dark cloud that is following you. Therefore, we no longer concentrate on looking at the dark cloud and seeing how can I repair my way back to being a true Christian. And we forget then that even the actions that we take they are actually supposed to be bringing us closer to God. They are supposed to be a way back to God. Because once I discover that I am, I have a darkened heart, I need someone who's going to lighten up that heart. Because if it, if it remains darkened, I'm a danger to everyone next to me. I'm a danger to my wife. I'm a danger to my children. I'm a danger to my brothers and sisters at church. Therefore, once I discover a darkened heart, that on its own is supposed to force me back to God. Sin changes the truth of God to a lie. When God says we can live a life a free of all these things, 
He actually means it. But when sins, when sin comes into a picture, it alters that. And it says God is lying. We cannot live a, a faithful life. God is lying. We cannot live a committed life to him. Therefore, it changes life to being a lie. It actually creates a platform where a creature is worshipped than a creator. In other words, as the verse says, you, for instance, Paul is saying when it comes to the issue of the thorn in my flesh, he says, God has allowed it to come my way so that I cannot be exalted. I can remain a humble servant. Because some of these crucibles, they are there to help, to help us to be humble. Because without them, we can be as uh, people who are arrogant and people who are out of this world and people who do not think that God can make a difference in our lives. Now, again, Paul latches on something that is very important. He says, when the heart is darkened, it creates an environment for homosexuality. That's what is, 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 is read in, in verses 26 and 27. It creates that, en that, that environment. Then it makes a clear issue, the argument that uh, homosexuality is then a perversion of God's truth. Because God has advanced the truth and the truth that he has advanced is the relationship that we have with him and pointing us back to the creation, what he has created and the format that we should follow. Therefore, this is a perversion of that format which God has created. I know that there will be a lot of discussion in this area uh, among our viewers at home because it's an issue that we are currently dealing with in our communities. But this is what Paul is addressing. Then, in as much as God has forno his foreknowledge, he does not interfere with our choices. He allows us to choose the way we want to. Hence, there are inbuilt consequences in our choices so that God is not responsible in saying, I'm going to punish, I'm going to do this. The punishment is inbuilt in the choice you are making in life. Therefore, these are issues that we need to look at and issues that would help us. Now, the lesson is making it very clear here. The lesson is saying, when a person chooses to sin, knowing that there is judgment, but that person continues to live in sin or choose sin, that person is crucifying Christ again. Therefore, we, it's a point that we need to look at that helps us. Then the lesson ties this nicely. Remember, we are talking about the crucibles of sin. And the verse that we started with says God's wrath. Now, it says God's wrath is not actually God saying in heaven, I'm going to come down and I'm going to do this and this and this to you. When he talks about God's wrath, it talks about you reaping what you had sown. In other words, it talks about the consequences of your decision and choices in life. Now, this is an important aspect that we probably need to, to look at and, and see how it will help us as we move forward. And God does not always intervene when we go through these things. There are times where he intervenes. He sees that this thing is going too far now for my child. But there are times where he is watching us and saying, will my child be able to do what I know he has the ability to do. Therefore, God allows things to happen. Now, the final point that is being mentioned here is that God's law, which is moral law, is the same or has the same weight as God's health laws. It is important that eating well, regular exercises, and looking at how we work because regular over uh, working is also a challenge that one needs to look at because if you don't, it would create a problem. Thank you. Therefore, Thank you, Pastor. Therefore, this is an important aspect that one needs to deal with. That we need to deal with 
without dealing with this issue, we will then have a serious uh, challenge. Then there are questions that one needs to ask uh, in the lesson, and those questions are very personal. It reflects on the experiences that I have gone through. And I would like each viewer at home to do an introspection and answer each of those questions honestly and faithfully. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, no, Pastor, thank you. And uh, yeah, the last one, you know, when I, it's not, the question I don't think is meant for, uh, you know, for your for your classroom setting. It's, it's, it's a personal one that you need to ask yourself. But so many points coming from, from, from your discussion on the lesson. And uh, I wish we had more time, but, but we don't. In case some of you think we do, we, we don't. But I want to encourage, you know, dealing with these matters of sin. We talked about homosexuality, a darkened heart. And if you have questions, uh, and I'm speaking to the viewers, if, if you have questions and you'd like uh, comments on, on whatever is being said, please feel free and put it in the comment section below. Um, when we air this, I think it will be uh, on a Wednesday evening or Tuesday or Thursday evening. Friday will come together and perhaps we can uh, indulge your questions. Um, but I want to just touch on this thing. And there's so many points I made here, but I won't have time. And maybe some other uh, the other panelists will, will be able to respond. It's just a darkened heart, you know. And a, a darkened heart is not, you, you're not born with a darkened heart. I, I don't think we are born. We are born, you know, with the inclination to sin. But but as the heart becomes darker, and I think we, to somewhat, we have it. Because you said, Pastor, that, you know, um, and rightfully so, that, uh, we only look at the external sins, but your, when you do sin, it's because of a darkened heart. And a darkened heart is is basically what we take in with our senses, with our eyes, with our you know our what we hear, places we walk, um, that we touch. And so, so I believe that to a certain degree, we can actually assist God in 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 allowing our hearts not to become darkened and finding ourselves through His strength in places that are not going to make that hard or watching things that's not going to make that hard dark. Because um, I think many times we, we say things is, yo, where did that where did that word come from? How can I think such an evil thought toward that person? But sin is a process, you know, as, as it, it, you, you, you've already allowed things and, and certain ideas to, to come into your mind. And, and when you react, as you have said, Pastor, it's because of a, a darkened heart, but a fed darkened heart, a darkened heart that we've actually been feeding to that point where we actually now commit sin. I don't know if there is anyone who'd like to uh, respond to that. Um, if not, we will go over to Wednesday's portion of the lesson, um, which will also be the concluding lesson because we've already dealt with Thursday's portion of the lesson. Uh, Pastor Candy. Um, let me greet you, uh, fellow panelists, as well as all the viewers at home. Welcome. What are you lesson? that has been opened to us this time again. Um, I see Sunday is laying the ground on the surprises that we must expect to be tried for as uh, people inclined to sin or sinfulness, we are susceptible to trials. Uh, sin is equivalent to trials. We can't help that. Whether you are good or bad, as we have, have, uh, have learned. And of course, uh, there's this heat carried in the crucibles. And part of that heat is in the hands of the devil, of Satan, that he throws at us with a intention, his only intention is to destroy us. And, you know, at times, as we have aptly quoted 1 Corinthians 1, 13, at times God catches that fire when he sees that it will overwhelm us and redirects it, throws it at another angle away from us, saving us and not from um, uh, consequences or trials per se, but saving us from being destroyed utterly, eternally, you see? And then of course, as Umfundisi Ukwala beautifully laid it out, um, there's sin. Uh, sin is like a boomerang, that rounded arrow uh, whose sharp tip is immersed in a 
deathly poison. It, it gets thrown out, but as it touches its target, it springs out and back to the trower, you see? And, and that is how sin is. We, we, we throw our lives out to the devil and that returns to us as consequences. It is bound to happen like that. And now on Wednesday, we are looking at purification, a word that we see um, all around the temple uh, aspect, the sanctuary, so to speak. Crucibles of purification that I also want us to view as uh, crucibles for salvation. For purification is a process that brings us to salvation, you see. And how beautiful the, 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 the verse that carries us from Jeremiah 9 verse 7 is, Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them. If it ended there, we would definitely be sure that uh, the Lord is the one that brings this pain upon us. Uh, be it consequences or be, be it the fire that, the, 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 that Satan throws at us, uh, we would be sure that it comes from the Lord if it ended there. But then it carries on and says, for how shall I do for the daughter of my people? In here is a suggestion that the Lord has this yearning cry in him of us having to receive, be on the receiving end of this pain, uh, these trials and tribulations. It does not um, bode well with the Lord that we have to sit with this. But then uh, Romans 8, 28, he allows them and not just allows them, uses them to refine us. And as he refines us, he is turning us around back to him. You know, thwarting the lies that are trying to bring down his truth, you know, and bringing up his truth so that it is not only seen, but that we will recognize it and, and leave it as the people that have been saved, you know, uh, refined, so to speak. Uh, you, know, you know, something about these crucibles of purification, they go in three ways. They go in three ways. You know, the crucibles, when God allows them, forces us kind of to, 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 to focus, refocus back to God's word, God's truth, back to God. And we begin to see God again as our father, our Abba, our daddy. You know, as a little child, when you see your father, you, you run to your daddy and you throw yourself on him knowing that he will not let you fall on the ground but he will you know carry you he will capture you and carry you so the crucible's intent is to bring us back to god and the only way we can be brought back to god is if we see our sinfulness we recognize and acknowledge that we have sinned in this way ne? And as we acknowledge it, it is one thing to acknowledge that we have sinned, but um, also that we, we are pained deeply by having gone, stepped off from God and, 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 and sinned. A, a little boy gets lost at age five from his mother at a very busy terminal point in their city. And uh, for 35 years, he never gets to see his mother, ever. And he's taken to an orphanage home and uh, is, uh, well, given away as an orphan to a family from overseas. 
And after, when he is 35, <clears throat> meaning he has lived 30 years now away from his mother, he decides to go back to his home for he knows where he comes from. He decides to go back to his home and try and find his mother. Ultimately, he does. <clears throat> he now has two mothers. You see, the one that uh, uh, nurtured and developed him and uh, the one that bore him. You, 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 you see, the pain he felt was equal to the joy he felt. We have just experienced a, an outage. The, it, 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 equal, it, it equals the joy he felt um, when he got lost. That is the joy he felt when he was reunited with his mother was equal to the pain he felt when he got lost from his mother. So this deep pain I'm talking about is equivalent to that. We, 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 we found joy in the Lord until as little children, we saw flowers uh, along the way. And uh, sooner than we could imagine, we were lost in, in very fearsome areas. And all that time, we, we, we were not happy, we we're unhappy. But when we get reunited through the working of the Lord, for it is the Lord himself that works our way back to him through these crucibles. And when we go back, the joy equals the pain, the initial pain. So we, we need to feel that pain and uh, after recognizing and acknowledging that um, we actually have seen. And, you know, as if that is not enough, there is another process that we have to go through. The decisions, not just one, we have to take every little moment um, that when we get tempted to go back, we need to remind ourselves that this is not the way. Remember, you got lost and you are separated from the one that loves you. And we have to make those decisions. Sometimes they are very harsh decisions we have to take, but we have to take them to keep us with the Lord and ensure our salvation, in fact, ensure our purification. You know, once people are purified, um, uh, in the sanctuary, they they needed to, to guard themselves, not to go back maybe and touch a dead person or a dead body, to guard themselves strictly. And this is what we need uh, to do. We need to guard ourselves, uh, which are the decisions to quit, like an alcoholic uh, has to remind themselves time and time and time again that I've borne so many losses from this thing. I can't go back there again as strongly as the urge to partake again, but I cannot if I want my life to be saved. These are the crucibles of purification or crucibles for salvation. Thank you. Amen. Amen, Sister Candy, uh, Pastor Candy. I'm going to um, open it up. If there's any last words you'd like to share, if not, then we can conclude. I see no mics are unmuting. It's a sign that the beloved has, has spoken their heart today. From my side, I want to say thank you so much for, um, for the lesson. And I must be honest, um, I was looking forward to the lesson because when I went through it, uh, I was blessed and I knew that when I get onto this panel that you are going to bless my soul again. And so this is the privilege and the blessing when you have six pastors coming together and dealing with the lesson, you get six mini sermons, um, absolutely with Hebrew and Greek included. So we are so fortunate. Thank you so much, panelists. We look forward. Next week is going to be beautiful. It's actually going to tie in with this week. Um, we will deal with, ah, um, it's entitled Birdcage, I think. Um, but it's it's powerful. Same with the idea of sufferings that we have to deal with and not coming from God and 
how to deal with it when it does come. And I think very relevant. Um, all of us are in the same boat when it comes to suffering and going through trials and tribulation. May God bless you. Um, may his countenance shine upon you. And I hope that we get to see each other again. Before we say our goodbyes, Pastor Guala, would you like to close in prayer for us, please? Yes, before I close uh, with prayer, I just want to say to our readers and listeners at home, please read the lesson so that you can get the benefit of the lesson when it's discussed. Uh, we will be able to look into the questions that you will raise, but please read the lesson. Thank you. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our kind and loving Father, we want to thank you uh, today for being our God and allowing us to go through experiences in life. And we pray, dear Lord, that those experiences may be the vehicles to bring us back to you and help us, Lord, to know that whatever we choose in life, our choices are followed by consequences. And those consequences may deprive us of the kingdom that you have prepared for us. Bless each one of us, Lord. Keep us faithful and focused in thee. And I pray, Lord, for each pastor who was here today and the interactions that we had. And I pray for the viewers at home, Lord. Be with them as they continue to learn, to learn and read and study your Bible. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.